Hello, this is Python Statistical. In this video, we are going to look at fitting a model to our clusters. We will be using density-based spatial clustering of application with noise, better known as dbscan. In the previous video, we looked at labels that use color descriptions for the four different clusters. We encoded these color descriptions with a numeric value so that we could use machine learning algorithms in Python. In this video, we will look at how to use dbscan to perform cluster analysis. Another name for this is unsupervised machine learning as we will not be using training data. In the previous video, I encoded the colors starting at 1. This will need to be changed so that the encoding starts at zero. The reason for this is that Python scikit-learn machine learning algorithms start encoding the fitted values from zero. So we need to be consistent with the way Python scikit-learn fits the data. So I'll change that now. I'm also going to output the color example data frame to a spreadsheet so that we are able to read it back in. I've also modified the spreadsheet to pandas function to also produce a data dictionary. This data dictionary contains the variable name we created and column descriptions used in creating the variable name. In doing this, we will know what the variable means. I've also output this in a spreadsheet which can be read back in when we need it. I'll now run the code again. So as you can see, the uh, encoding of the color descriptions now starts at zero. Also, the column variable name and column description has now been stored in a spreadsheet. I'm going to give a short overview as to how dbscan works without going into the detailed theory. So dbscan is a cluster analysis algorithm where you specify an epsilon distance EPS, which is the maximum distance from a selected core point to other points that I have denoted with an X. The other parameter is the minimum number of samples that will constitute a cluster. So dbscan will pick an arbitrary point in your data set and will start looking for all the X points that are within that epsilon distance from the selected core point. Once all the points have been found, and it meets the minimum sample criteria, in this example it has been set at 6, it will define that as a cluster. It will then move on to another core point and repeat the process. This process continues until all the clusters have been found. dbscan is superior to k nearest neighbor as it will estimate the number of clusters and can handle any noise that is in your data set. Noise are points that don't seem to belong to a cluster, so dbscan excludes them by labeling them minus one. In this example, we have marked noise points with an N. So here is the Python code that will take our simulated data with the true labels that we created in the previous video and fit a model to the X values. 
In fitting the DB scan model, we will produce fitted labels that can be compared to the true labels we encoded with the numeric values 0, 1, 2 and 3. We can then see how well the fitted labels compare to the true labels. So line 8 imports pandas as we need this to read back the Excel spreadsheet with the encoded color categories we wrote out with pandas using the to Excel method. Line 9 imports the NumPy library which is required as we need to put the X values into an array to be able to use scikit-learn dbscan algorithm. In line 10 we import the dbscan algorithm from scikit-learn. In line 11 we import the metrics which will allow us to measure how well the model fits. And in line 12 we import the standard scalar function. This provides us with the function that will standardize our X values by subtracting the value from the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. This step is necessary so that a quantity in millions can be compared to say a quantity in thousands. In lines 14 to 17 we read in the Excel spreadsheet we generated with the encoded color labels using the pandas read Excel method. In lines 24 to 27 we just keep the true labels that we generated in the previous video which we called color cat. These true labels will be compared to the fitted labels we get from dbscan. In lines 28 to 30, we keep the X values that will be fitted using the dbscan algorithm. Notice that in dropping the variables, we don't need, we require the parameter axis equals 1, which tells pandas to operate on the columns. In line 34, we put the x values into a numpy array. In line 38, we standardize our x values so that the x1 and x2 values are comparable. Standardization is simply achieved by taking away the mean from the value and dividing by a standard deviation. This results in the standardized values having a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. In line 40, we fit the model with an EPS of 0.4 and a minimum sample set to 10. So for it to be a cluster we need at least 10 sample points and these points to be within a minimum distance of 0.4 from the core point. In line 42 we pull out the fitted labels from fitting the model and then in line 44, we put the true labels into a NumPy array. In lines 48 to 50, we calculate the number of estimated clusters from the fitted model and print that result. In lines 56 to 69, we use various scikit-learn metrics to see how well the fitted model agrees with the true labels. These metrics are bounded below by zero and have a maximum upper bound of one. So the closer we get to one, the better the model fit. Finally, we calculate the silhouette coefficient 
that gives a measure of how tightly clustered your points are within a cluster and separation between other clusters. A negative silhouette coefficient is undesirable as it indicates a lack of clustering. The silhouette coefficient has a minimum of minus 1 and a maximum of 1. So we want this coefficient to be positive and as close to 1 as is possible. I will now run this code. So we can see that dbscan estimated a number of clusters to be 4. And indeed, according to true labels, we have 4 clusters. The metrics are close to 1, indicating a good model fit. And finally, the silhouette coefficient is 0 0.629, indicating well-defined clustering. I'll stop here for now. In the next video, we'll look at fitting dbscan to real statistical data. So thank you for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Or if you disliked it, give it a, a thumbs down. And if you really like these videos, please subscribe to Python Statistical. Thank you for watching.